instruction guide go down below. Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business. Welcome back to the channel. Today in QuickBooks Point of Sale, we are gonna talk about how to properly complete a sales order. And this topic has come about because uh, I've actually come upon a few customers lately and they just never were trained on this. And so they take all of the payments for the sales order, but I noticed that they actually weren't uh, completing it or closing it out correctly. They were manually moving the status to close, but that actually does not finish your sales order in the manner in which it should be completed. So we're gonna show you now. Before I do that, I'm gonna have you click on the link down in the description below to get over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group. Join up there, I would be happy to see you. You can ask about any error, training, uh, question, random thing. We have over a thousand community members who are also store owners using QuickBooks Point of Sale just like you. They'd be happy to help out and answer questions or you can post hello and just say hi to me if you'd like. If you're on YouTube today, go ahead and hit subscribe so you get all the latest, greatest QuickBooks point of sale videos coming at you all the time. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so I actually have a list full of sales orders. If you didn't know, oftentimes a sales order will be like somebody pre-purchasing something. Maybe it's not in stock yet. Maybe it's a special order. There's a lot of different ways you can use a sales order. Uh, in this instance, we're gonna look at John Smith here for sales order number six. I'm gonna open this up and show it to you. Uh, we've got, what, five different items here. So he's going to be picking them up when they come in. You'll notice down here he has paid a deposit of about 60 bucks and there's still $63.78 left. Now, oh, I'm sorry, the deposit is up here, but you can see that he's got 63.78 left. So, uh, the wrong way to do this is to just take all of the complete uh, payment and then just move this to closed. You don't wanna do it that way. Why? Because the sales order actually does not complete then. It actually doesn't sell the items and realize them as income, and it does not take your quantities out of stock, and that can be a real issue. And then you can mow or bulldoze over that during your uh, inventory quantity counting at the end of the year, and it's really just a bad thing for your counting system. So when you do this in the correct way, it's going to remove the quantities from stock and I will tell you that all of the money on these sales orders until you do what I'm about to show you is going to sit in a deposit account and not be realized as real income. It's also not going to show real tax collection until you do this. So here is the secret that some people were not trained on. You're gonna go on the I want to menu and you can, if you'd like to, take the remainder of the payment here on the sales order, but you don't have to because Completing this sale is right here, this selection that says sell items. And this is some magic right here. Uh, we can also take payment in the next step. But yeah, on your sales order, when you're done with it, when you're ready to be totally completed, you're gonna go on the I want to menu to sell items. Then it's gonna ask you which items can you sell. I'm gonna have a different video on selling partial orders and completing the rest later. Uh, we are going to close out the whole order today. I'm going to hit select all and continue. And here it magically brings us to the sales receipt, make a sale screen. We have all of the items from the sales order here and they are ready to be taken out of stock and completed. You can see down here that it's showing we are going to be using $60 from the deposit. That's actually going to move that $60 out of the deposits account in QuickBooks Accounting and into your merchandise income. It's gonna be a real sale now. It's also going to deplete the proper quantities over here, five of each, I guess, is what we're doing. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take the remainder in cash, which is $62.02, I hit save. Now the amount due is nothing. And this is the point also at which you will save and print and the customer will get their real receipt for the items that they are purchasing. I'm just gonna hit save because I don't have a receipt printer. This customer earned a reward, whoopee. All right, so that's it, it is all done. And now the magic part, another magic part I guess, is if I go back to sales orders, 
Uh, I'm on open sales orders, but let's look at all of them. Now, where was that? It was John Smith, sales order number six. That has actually been closed. Why can't we see the status here? Let me add the status column. I forgot to have that on there. And we'll move it way up next to sales order number save okay so now status you can see that just moving that to the sales screen and selling it has brought our status to close so this is now automatically a closed sales order and the real selling of the items would be in the sales history if I looked at today John Smith uh, we have one for deposit that doesn't have any items on it and then we have the real completion at the end uh, and this 